You remember in chapter two, when we talked about surveys, and we saw that uh, surveys are just one kind of study where a lot of data is generated. And if we're going to make sense of this mass of data, then we have to be able to condense it into a manageable form. And that is one of the main goals in studying statistics, is to make sense of a large mass of data. Now it often happens when we're gathering data that a particular response uh, in the data set is repeated several times. A good example of this is in the voting theory that we, d that we discussed. Um, in a preference table, you remember the numbers on the top row uh, give us the number of people who had the same preference in their voting. And in statistics, uh, these numbers uh, are given a name, and that is the frequency of the response. Okay, that leads us to our first definition in this chapter. A data set together with the corresponding frequencies of the responses is known as a frequency distribution. Now we also might like to know just not just the number of times that a particular response has been given but also the percent that that response makes up of the entire survey. And so we will also refer to the relative frequency of a response as the fraction or percent of the whole that that response makes up. Okay, so let's look at an example now. We have a new TV program, and this program is going to be evaluated by 25 viewers. There are five possible ratings that the viewers can give, E, A, V, B, and P, which will stand for excellent, above average, average, below average, and poor. And the Ratings for this program are given in this table. Okay, so here's the table. You can see next to each rating that we have a number given, a frequency. That's the number of people that uh, responded with an E for that that survey. Okay, and then the same thing for A, V, B, and P. Okay, and then you notice at the bottom here are the totals given 25. There are 25 people in the survey. Okay, so to get the relative frequency we take the frequency of each response for E, for example, 4, and we divide it by the total, and that gives us the fraction of the responses that were E, in this case 0.16 or 16 percent. Now we do that for each of the responses, and then of course the total must add up to 100 percent. <coughs> 